Okay, so in the last couple examples, we built simulations that use the drawing commands that we've become really familiar with. Um, but for this example, we're going to take a slightly different approach and think about um, pixels, the grid of pixels as being our elements that get um, changed and manipulated in our simulation. Um, this is inspired by James Gleek's book, um, Chaos, which makes reference to this forest fire simulation um, from many decades ago. I was unable to find a really reliable sort of citation for this, um, but I have found some examples to share with you. The first is this really cool um, uh, example that you can look at online and it goes into a ton of detail. It's really great. And then the other is John Conway's Game of Life. And Conway is a really important person in the history of artificial life, of um, simulation and uh, mathematics. And the game of life is kind of one of his most famous contributions where this grid of black and white pixels creates these really, really amazing complicated behaviors just from some simple rules based on um, a pixel's neighbors. And we're gonna do something kind of similar. Game of life would be an amazing thing for you to try to program as a next step after this. I mean, it's just a little more complicated than what we're going to do here. Um, okay, so I've got my template set up. Um, we're not running full size here in the browser because that would be just too many pixels to work with. So I've limited it to 400 by 400. And um, okay, so a couple of things then we kind of want to set up to start. We are going to be working with the pixels, but we want to be able to keep track of um, or we're going to think of them as individual pixels, but really we're going to actually create a two-dimensional array that's going to store different states of those pixels. And it, this is just going to make it easier than working with color in P5.js. Um, so I'm going to create a variable called forest. This will be my forest that we're going to sadly light on fire. Um, we're also going to need some colors. So I'm going to create a ground color, tree color, and a burned color. Ground cannot burn. Trees can, and then burned areas are ones that have already been reached. Um, you'll notice I'm not creating the color values up here. I have to do that in setup because we don't have access to all the P5.js commands um, until we hit setup here. Let's go ahead and I'll put these colors in here. I've sort of picked these out ahead of time. Um, and what else do we need for now? Oh, we're also gonna wanna create some variables for these different terrains. So ground will make zero, tree let's make equal to one and burned we can equal to negative one lots of ways that we could do this uh, and this is a lot like the finite state machine uh, video that we looked at before um, though we're working with it in a slightly different way and then the last thing um, is i want to decide we're going to randomly create these trees so let's uh, create a tree density variable and this is essentially the chance that we're going to create a tree in any given spot on the screen and um, that's all we need for variables. Let's then go ahead and create our forest. And our forest is gonna be a two-dimensional array. This is a list that contains a bunch of lists and you can think of that as like the pixels. So each row um, is a list and then there's a bunch of those that create our image. So I'm gonna say forest is equal to an empty array. And then we wanna fill this up. So um, we'll use some for loops for this. So we'll, we'll go on our Y plus some height. So we're gonna create one element for every pixel on the screen. You could certainly reduce this resolution if you wanted. And then uh, we're also gonna go through our X. And we'll, we'll, we're gonna do something here in a second. Um, but for each pixel then we're gonna say if a random number between zero and 100 is less than the tree density, then the forest at X or sorry, at y, x, so this is a two-dimensional array. It's a little different than we're used to, two indices. Uh, we're gonna set this equal to tree. Otherwise, we will set this equal to the ground. Now, if we were to do this, um, we would get some errors, and that's because um, while the y position may be set, the, um, uh, the x position, or the other way around, Anyway, we don't have um, forest right now is a single list. It's not a two dimensional list. So for each um, row, we're gonna say forest at index Y is equal to a blank array. So this is the way we have to do it to create a two dimensional array in other programming languages. This is a little more straightforward. JavaScript, we have to do this kind of loop. Essentially what's happening is we're creating um, random pixels of either trees or ground. 
And um, let's go ahead and draw that just so we can see it. And um, to do that in the draw, we're gonna do load pixels, of course. We'll also want update pixels at the end. So we'll just do that here. And then let's go through our two dimensional array. So y is uh, zero, y is less than height y plus plus. Um, this is based on pixel coordinates. So if you were to make your array smaller than the screen, you would need to change this a little bit. And then um, let's draw the force. So we'll grab the value from this array and y x if the value is ground. Remember, ground is just a number. And this, again, just makes it easier for us to read our code later. If it's ground, then we will set at x and y the ground color. Else, if the value is tree, huh, not true, tree, set x, y, tree color. And then um, while we're at it, let's also do burned, though we won't have any burned pixels yet. OK, super. Let's run this and see if we can. There we go. There's our forest. I'm actually going to, we can zoom this in a little bit so we can see it. Um, and that looks pretty cool. So the lighter areas are the ground, the, or no, other way around, right? Let's see. But yeah, the darker areas are ground, the lighter areas are trees, and um, we don't have any burned areas yet. Um, so cool. And if we were to refresh this, we would get this other random forest. And if we were to change the tree density variable, we would get fewer or more trees, depending on that. But I like 60. I sort of played with these numbers to get it to work the way we want. OK, then next thing in our setup is, um, sadly, we need to start a forest fire. And um, let's start it in the center. So x is width divided by 2. Y will be height divided by 2. You could make this interactive. Um, now, the division here is going to give us a floating point number, a number uh, with a decimal place. So I'm just going to, uh, but our pixels, of course, and positions in the array have to be integers. So I'm just going to convert those to integers. And then I'm going to say forest at y x equals burned. And again, that's just setting it to negative 1. Um, now, when this happens, we may not be able to see it here, but one pixel is burned. Um, but of course, the fire doesn't spread. And that's the next thing that we need to add here. Um, so inside our for loops, I'm going to run a function that we need to create called burn at x and y. So this is going to check it and um, run this burn function. And I'm going to copy paste this here because it's just a lot of if statements. It's a little funky. And we can check this out. So this is our burn function. And it's going to do a few things. Um, if uh, it's not burned here, it's going to immediately return. So if this current pixel is not burning, we don't need to do anything. It's, it can't uh, burn its neighbors. However, if it is burned, um, then it's going to spread the fire. So it's going to do it to the left, to the right, up and down. Um, and it's doing a quick check here just to see a couple of things. It's checking if we're not going off the edge of the screen, because obviously we can't do that. And um, it's checking if the pixel next to it is a tree. You can't burn ground, but you can burn a tree. Um, and then, and that's it. So now, if we run this, we see our fire spread. And it does so in this way that I think is just absolutely mesmerizing. It um, speeds up, it slows down, it gets faster. Um, it creates these sort of tendrils. And essentially, yeah, what it's doing, it can't burn ground, but it can burn a tree. So if there's enough trees nearby, it sustains that part of the fire. Otherwise, like down here on the right, you can see um, it sort of stops and leaves these unburned areas because it was unable to reach them. Um, we can add one more thing here to um, make this uh, work better, I think. We can say key pressed and set up. And in setup here, we reset our entire array and we burn a new, a new spot. And so this means that then when I press a key, it's going to reset our simulation. So if it runs here and I want to restart it, just push the space bar and it's going to do that, which is pretty fun. 
Um, so, oh, and you know, sometimes it's going to do this where it, because it's random, it reaches a spot where it's not going to burn any longer. And this would be something you could experiment with here is to see, are there any new pixels being burned this frame? Otherwise, maybe you want to reset it or have something else happen. Um, I'm sure there's too a lot of other things you could consider adding here. Um, you could have wind that sort of makes the fire stronger in one direction or the other. You could have other landscape elements that don't burn like rocks or um, ponds or something like that. Um, but this idea of using pixels or this grid for simulation is a lot different than we've covered before, but you can see it gives you some really cool possibilities. And again, just as a like a next step, if you're interested, coding something like Conway's Game of Life is going to be a really fun exercise and is absolutely mesmerizing to watch.